The emergence of the English novel in the mid-18th century was closely intertwined with a period of profound social transformation. England, undergoing the tumultuous shift towards becoming the world's first capitalist economy, confronted the challenges of urbanization, industrialization, and globalization. Samuel Richardson's seminal work, Pamela, often hailed as the first English novel, captures the essence of this transformative era, portraying a vivid image of class conflict and offering insights into personal identity, social responsibility, and moral virtue. The historical context of the novel's inception is crucial for understanding its depth and significance. England's transition to capitalism marked a pivotal period where economic structures and social values underwent drastic changes. The rural economy became centralized, with common lands appropriated by the wealthy, eliminating options for subsistence farming. This centralization, a hallmark of capitalism, compelled many to work for wages. Simultaneously, urban populations burgeoned, with London reaching a staggering 750,000 inhabitants by 1750, making it the largest city in the West. Globalization also made its early appearance as England's burgeoning textile industry relied on international trade. The intricate process of importing cotton, Processing it in England and exporting finished goods epitomized the interconnectedness of a globalized economy. These developments had a profound impact on the English national imagination, challenging traditional communal values and hierarchical structures. The imagined society, characterized by communal solidarity and mutual obligation, faced disruption. The accusations against rural landlords prioritizing self-interest and the chaotic urban situations for newcomers reflected the challenges to maintaining traditional images of social cohesion. As sweeping changes unfolded, questions of personal identity, social responsibility, and moral values came to the forefront. In a society increasingly driven by economic self-interest, determining worthy and admirable behavior became a critical consideration. The escalating class conflict further strained traditional notions of social cohesion and shared responsibility. With diminishing trust in traditional moral authorities, Establishing a sense of right and wrong and upholding values became pressing concerns. These questions resonated through subsequent centuries, shaping the narrative landscape of novels. Samuel Richardson's Pamela stands as a testament to this impact. A stark departure from Eliza Haywood's character types, Richardson's characters in Pamela are distinctive and complex, with conflicting emotions that invite reader participation. The narrative centers around Pamela, a 15-year-old servant girl, and her resistance against her domineering master, Mr. B. Richardson skillfully navigates the explosive class conflict, portraying Pamela as morally admirable yet occasionally self-righteous. Mr. B, representing the ruling classes, is depicted as grasping and possessive but potentially capable of reform. The epistolary format of Pamela, conveyed through the protagonist's letters and diaries, intensifies reader engagement, sparking debates across the country. The novel's comedic ending, where Pamela and Mr. B marry, serves Richardson's broader agenda. It signifies not just a reflection of social change, but an aspiration to influence it. Richardson advocates for social assimilation and reconciliation, 
positing that they are not only possible but desirable for all parties involved. In this, Richardson emerges as a reformer, not a revolutionary, aiming to convince his middle-class audience to hope and work for the rehabilitation of traditional values amid social upheavals. Pamela becomes a mirror reflecting the complexities of its time, inviting readers to ponder the possibilities of assimilation and social reconciliation in the face of evolving structures. Appreciating the historical forces at play in early English novels necessitates an examination of the stark contrasts between two masters of the form, Samuel Richardson and Henry Fielding. Richardson, embodying the rising middle class with its anxieties, ambitions, and self-righteousness, stands in stark opposition to Fielding's almost aristocratic confidence and social security. The narrative intimacy experienced in Richardson's Pamela, conveyed through the protagonist's letters and diaries, diverges sharply from the distant perspective employed in Fielding's Tom Jones, where our primary connection is with the novel's learned and worldly narrator. Despite both works culminating in reconciliation and marriage, they diverge in their endorsement of social values. Richardson elevates his heroine into the gentry, while Fielding, in contrast, reveals his wayward hero to have been a gentleman all along. The assertion that class conflict is a central issue in early English fiction does not imply a unified response from writers. In contemplating the intersection of history and literature, particularly in the 18th century, one must navigate the complexities of the historical milieu and the diverse responses it elicited. This diversity is evident in the pronounced disparities between Samuel Richardson and Henry Fielding, two pioneering novelists of the time. Comparisons between Richardson and Fielding are inevitable, considering their major works in the 1740s. Richardson's literary contributions include Pamela and the more ambitious Clarissa, while Fielding authored Joseph Andrews and the universally acclaimed Tom Jones. Clarissa, with its tragic conclusion, starkly contrasts with the more optimistic endings typical of early English novels including Richardson's own Pamela. Fielding's Tom Jones unfolds a dual narrative, discovering Tom's origins and tracing his moral development. Richardson and Fielding emerge as polar opposites in various aspects. Richardson, representing the rising middle class, exhibited upward mobility from a modest background to running a successful printing business. In contrast, Fielding exuded an almost aristocratic demeanor, confidently embracing classical education and illusions, setting him apart from Richardson. The works of Richardson and Fielding diverge notably. Richardson's seriousness contrasts with Fielding's wit, irony, and occasional borderness. While Richardson emphasizes an intimate connection through character narratives, Fielding maintains a narrative distance with a worldly and learned narrator. The divergence extends to the endorsement of social values in the resolution of their stories. Richardson promotes social mobility and class reconciliation, whereas Fielding reinforces existing class divisions by marrying characters within their social strata. The differences in their endings are multifaceted. Richardson grapples with uncertainty, presenting a comedic ending while acknowledging ongoing social challenges. Fielding, in contrast, confidently asserts the enduring affection between his characters and embraces a conservative perspective. In conclusion, 
The exploration of Richardson and Fielding's works unveils nuanced responses to class conflict in early English fiction. Richardson's uncertainty reflects his social position, while Fielding unabashedly embraces a conservative stance, comfortable with the idea of a stratified society. The contrast between these literary giants underscores the multifaceted nature of the early English novelistic landscape. 